Forget hot girl summer, it's time for a drizzed-filled summer. That did not sound nearly as good as it did in my head. But yeah, apparently it's the summer of drizzed, which also doesn't sound great when you say it out loud, but that's what it is because it's time for all things drizzed to, to appear as Wizards of the Coast has basically been on a, a drizzed kick all of a sudden. You can see behind me, obviously I'm no stranger to the drizzed franchise. I've read every single book to date, and I have both of his scimitars hanging on that custom plaque that I made on the wall. There's a link. Uh, oh, well, there's a video on the channel. I'll put a card up at the corner if you want to go see how to make something like that. But they put out this whole website, right, or a section of the Wizards website, Legend of Drizzed, uh, you know, slash story slash Legend of Drizzed, and it just basically gives you all sorts of Drizzed stuff. And I think there's a reason why, and I think it's tied to the upcoming D&D &D TV series, but we'll talk about it. So obviously, first up, there's Dark Alliance, the video game that comes out in just over a month, which I still stand by, should be called Companions of the Hall. But it is a cooperative beat-em-up game that features the Companions of the Hall, of which Drizzed is one. There's this other, like, weird lullaby thing that Wizards of the Coast reached out to R.A. Salvatore and said, hey, can you write a creepy drow lullaby? And then they had Benedict Cumberbatch narrate it, which seems very strange, just like all things considered. But uh, from reading through this, it seems like this lullaby is about the time before he left Menzo Berenzon. Um So, okay, that's an interesting story that we're going back that far when the stories come so far from that. Then we have this little section here with different pieces of art and a little bit of a primer and history on each of the characters. I've also never seen this art of Drizzt before, and I like it a lot. So we've got Drizzt and the Companions of the Hall, right? Bruner, Caddy Bree, and Wolfgar. And then we have Gwenevar, Malastor, and Drizzt's, uh, Drizzt's mother, and Loth the Spider Queen, right? So this seems, just from the art and what we're seeing of all the characters, this seems like they're focusing more on their sort of I'm not going to call it their original appearances, but early on in the story, as time has gone on, some of those characters have evolved and changed slightly in how they dress, how they looked, and how, you know, for lack of a better term, they play as far as classes and stuff. So this is more of the original um, sort of uh, lineup and how they were designed. Uh, and then we have some locations here, right? Icewind Dale, uh, which is where a lot of the early books take place because that's where Clan Battlehammer, Bruner's, uh, family uh, originally lived. Then we have Menzo Barons on and some interesting new terminology regarding drow. Now, if I click read more, let's see. So it says the city of Menzo Barons on, this is probably the most popular drow city as made popular by the Legend of Drizzt novels, uh, is a cult, uh, stronghold cult of Lolth, which is true. They do worship the Spider Queen, but it calls them Uda Drow. This Uda Drow society has become corrupted by the malicious goddess who teaches them to despise all outsiders. Um, and it says, the Sebastian of the Uda Drow, Drow elves who become tainted by Loth's insidious teachings. Uda Drow societies value ruthlessness, obedience, and the burning hatred of surface dwellers. Um, and then this is probably, again, the traditional uh, matriarchal society. I don't know if that's everywhere, but that's obviously very present in Menzo Berenzan. Uh, females are the leaders. They are the clerics. They are the ones who are the conduits for Loth. And men are seen as lesser males, uh, you know, whether they're just for fighting or some of them have arcane abilities. Um, again, the entire series of uh, of the Driz novels will touch on this very heavily. If you're planning on running a game in Menzo Berenzon or in the Underdark, I highly recommend you read those novels. You're doing yourself and your players a disservice if you don't. Uh, there's just so much lore there. Things kind of changed in the most recent novel a little bit. We saw sort of a, a reference to Seldarine, and like then we look at something like um, Baldur's Gate 3, we see there are options for Loth Sworn Drow and Seldarine uh, uh, Drow. I think that's how you pronounce it. But then here we see this reference to Uda Drow, so I don't know. Then there's this other location here, Kaladay, which mentions Avon Drow, which is like an ice city. So even as some of their kin followed Loth down to the Underdark, many Drow Elves rejected her, remaining true to their innate integrity. One band ventured north, vanishing from history behind curtains of snow, aurora, and illusion. They became the Avon Drow, or Starlight Elves, a highly secretive clan steeped in powerful magic. Now, I don't know, like, this sound, it, they're referencing them as Drow, so it doesn't sound like it's Moon Elves or Star Elves or any of these other kind of Forgotten Realms Elves. These are Avon Drow, which are a, clearly a type of Drow. We can't really see much from the images. Uh, they remain untainted by Loth's influence, and life in Kaladay is radically different 
from Menzo Berenzon. I'm very curious if this is going to come up in this new novel. I think so, because it's called Starlight Enclave, and this seems like that. Um, uh, and let's see. Yet not many would rejoice to see it. Almost no one, including the longest-lived elves, can remember its existence. And then we have Sakaloth, which references the Lauren Drow, which seem like almost like wood elf jungle elves. I'm very confused. Uh, heard far from the south, one territory Lauren Drow are green shadow elves. Far from the spider cream and her terrors, the Lauren Drow draw their wisdom from the environment, the generosity of earth, the myst uh, mystery of the sky, and the complex harmony of the forest. So what this sounds like to me is a schism or a split between drow and elves is what it sounds like to me. And I'm fine with that, but like, it just seems weird to inject this so late into, I'm not going to say it's 5e specific, but... So, you know, if you think about how elves are currently categorized in 5e, right, we have wood elves, high elves, and drow. That's what's in the player's handbook. What this sounds like to me is you have wood elves, high elves, and all the other types of elves that we've had, sea elves and whatever, and then you have drow. I mean, you have standard drow or what we what we presume to be standard drow or these now uda drow, and the equivalency of basically drow wood elves are these lauren or green shadow elves, well, they call them Green Shadow Elves or Lauren Drow, so I'm a little confused there. And then these sort of, uh, what are they called? Avon Drow are sort of like the High Elf Drow or High Drow. I don't, I don't know. Either way, it's all new to me. So, lore folks, AJ, Mr. Rex, Jordan, go make videos on this so I can learn about it. Um, and then we have the section down at the bottom, Experience the Legend, right? So we've got uh, a whole Drizzt store on Amazon. Starlight Enclave, the new book, which we'll talk about, and then Dark Alliance, the game. So, and then there's also this Hasbro Pulse collectible figurine, which I can speak to. It's been sitting on the shelf behind me, and if you haven't seen it, it's actually very cool. It's very, very detailed, as you can see here. Tons of points of articulation. The stand, you have to order separate, but it comes with both of the scimitars, which again, I got these from GameStop that you can see hanging there, and I put the little sort of attacking magic effect on them. So it comes with Drizzt, it comes with, you know, a full-size Guinevar, and here's a little size reference for you. For those of you who are curious how big Guinevar was to Drizzt, if these are size accurate, pretty large. And then it obviously comes with different faces and, and hands and stuff that you can put on Drizzt. Uh, he's, got a, he's got the necklace that he uses to summon Andahar, the unicorn, that comes off. Uh, the cloak comes off. It comes with a little onyx figurine for summoning Guinevar, and my favorite part... Um, this really sweet D20, which has like a pearlescent glitter blue effect. And as you know, that's oversized. It's got the ampersand on the D20. So let's go back and talk about this Drizzt store, right? So I, I got to show you this. So <laughs> there's some funny stuff here. So the pre-order for the game, you can get all the books. There's 30 some odd novels at this point. Uh, they're almost all, actually all of them are available on Audible and all of the main series books are narrated by Victor Bavine, so it's the same Audible narrator. He does a great job, and that's good because you don't have to worry about someone changing voices or something during. It's all very consistent. And then we have the new book here. Um, we can put, There's the new Magic the Gathering set. I guess during this 22-minute uh, like video where B. Dave Walters interviewed and talked with Ari Salvatore, they looked at the new Loth cards in the... Uh, and the Loth and the Drizzt cards contained in the upcoming Adventures in the Forgotten Realms Magic series. Then we have the board games, collectibles, which I'll talk about in a second, and then apparel and accessories. So let's go to apparel and accessories. This is something I was going to do a video on, but there's a D&D t-shirt club now. For 18 bucks a month, they'll send you a D&D t-shirt once a month. You don't know what it's going to be, but you get a new t-shirt every month. And then this is just the D&D kind of shirt store, but you can see there are some Drizzt uh, shirts among everything else. I actually own one of these. I think I own the I own the Paladin shirt, although I don't. Yeah, not this Paladin shirt. I own a different Paladin shirt from this list somewhere. If you scroll down, it's this one. Or is it? It's this one. I own this Paladin shirt. But anyway, um, I don't know. I've been thinking about signing up for the T-shirt club. If this could be something you could gift to someone, I feel like that'd be a really like an easy gift for someone. Give them a T-shirt a month. But anyway, collectibles. So they have in here the Jada. If we scroll down, because we, oh, we don't want to get the Jada toys diecast figurines, 
which I've done a video on in the past, and I found these at Walmart, and a lot of the times they end up going on clearance. They're okay, they're made out of metal, but the paint is just globbed on. You can remove the paint and then let, you know get a little bit of the detail back, but how about a $1,500 Drizzt statue? Folks, this thing is five feet seven inches tall and is $1,500 coming out in December. Who? Who buys this? Now, I'm sure this is probably for, like, the people, I guess, that would get it would be folks who have, like, a shop, like a game store, so you can have Drizzt in your front window or Drizzt set up somewhere. But it's $1,500. Now, I don't know who makes this. It, oh, it's WizKids. Never mind. It's a WizKids statue. I will put a, an affiliate link in the description in case one of you goes out and wants to buy this $1,500 Drizzt statue. I will get a little bit of it monetarily if you happen to buy it, but I highly doubt anybody will. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's five feet, seven inches tall. I mean, it looks nice. It comes with, you know, these are pre-renders, but it comes with the swords. Now they look to be basically the same as the swords I have hanging on the wall. I don't know, it says they're foam, so those ones are made out of plastic and kind of they have um, die cast handles. But yeah, I mean, it looks good. But the problem is it's a foam statue. His face isn't gonna have any kind of articulation of any kind. I don't know how bendable and poseable it is. The arms always seem to be at his sides in all of the pictures. So it's if it's a statue, you probably can't move it. But what I did think was interesting is that you can remove the hood and the cloak. So like in theory, you might be able to wear the hood, the cloak, possibly the little Andahar unicorn pendant as well. So is this worth a $1,500 statue for you to have a set of Drizz swords and a Drizz cloak? No, it's not. If they wanted to make money, Wiz Kids and Wizards of the Coast, this is free, folks. You made the swords, make the cloak that I can go out and buy it, made out of, you know, that same green material. Make the Andahar necklace that he has, right? That, make that, and then while you're at it, again, continue on what I said and make holy symbols. Make other, like, wear, make those bracers, right? Make his, his bracers of speed that he wears and all the other stuff. If you made that and just sold it carte blanche, not tied to a $1,500 foam statue, people would buy that because people want to have that. People want to dress up like their characters. And yeah, they could obviously go to Etsy and buy stuff or go on eBay or go to costume shops or make it themselves if they know how. But there's an entire market of people who would buy like a generic adventuring cloak. Just saying. All right. Back to this. So anyway, affiliate link in the description if you feel, if you feel like picking up a $1,500 Drizzt statue. Um, and here's the novel, Starlight Enclave, coming out on the 3rd of August, so just a couple months away from now, and is book one of a new trilogy. So the front cover looks like it has, it looks like, I can't tell, maybe that's, is that Artemis and Trary and, and Caddy Bree? Um, but the synopsis I thought was interesting, right? So I guess potential spoilers for this and maybe other Driz novels if you haven't read them all, so be, you've been warned. Um, but after the settling dust of the demon uprising, two years of peace, this would be post the demon war, i.e., you know, the uh, Baldur's Gate descent into Avernus storyline. Uh, rumblings from Menzo Baranzan now have Jarlaxle nervous, worried his allies uh, may be pulled into a civil war between the great houses. Again, this has been done a bunch, but all right. He's eager to ensure Zach Nefain, uh, who's Drizzt's father, is armed with weapons befitting his skill, including one in particular, Kazatea. A powerful artifact, the sword known as Cutter, has started wars, corrupted its users, and spilled the blood of many, many people. Nonetheless, or maybe because of that, the rogue Jarlaxle and a small group of friends will go on an expedition looking for the weapon's last wielder, Doomwheel, in the freezing north, for she may be the key to unlocking the sword's potential, perhaps the key to preventing the bloodshed looming over the Underdark. Uh, and as they explore the top of the world, Drizzt is on a journey of his own, both spiritual and physical. He wants to introduce his daughter, Bree, to Grandmaster Kane and the practices that have been so central to his beliefs. But many, uh, or sorry, but having only recently come back from the true transcendence, the Drow Ranger is, now lo is no longer sure what his beliefs mean anymore. He's on a path to determining the future, not just for his family, but perhaps the entire Northlands of the realms themselves. Two different roads. 
on one, Jarlaxel and Zacnafane are on a quest to find the pieces that could offer salvation to Menzel Berenzon. On the other, Driz seeks answers that could offer salvation to not just his soul, but all souls. No matter outcome, no matter the outcome of the journey, the realms will never be the same again. So, interesting stuff. I'm curious to see where it goes. This is just as good a time as me to try to figure out how I'm going to rekindle my book club idea. So I'll leave it out there again. I got a couple suggestions, and I'm sorry, it just fell off. The, you know, I've been busy. Uh, but I wanted to start a D&D book club with you guys on the internet here. Figure out how to do it, whether it be through a Discord, private Discord, or some sort of podcast. I don't really know how I would go about doing it and how we would handle it. Because I would like to do novels like this and potentially the new Dragonlance novel. But then it's just like, should I start with book 36 of the Drizzt series or should we start with book one? I don't know. And then I thought it would also be interesting to continue the book club, but also do it with actual D&D books. Like, let's read the Dungeon Master's Guide front to back and we'll talk about that. But anyway, there is two things left to do. We have the Sleep of Sound Lullaby. So I haven't listened to it. Let's listen to it together. Here we go. Narrated by Benedict Cumberbatch. Sleep quiet, my child, my little drow. Your dreams invite tranquility now. Cast in this cavern, stone walls so secure. The web holds you tight through underdark night. And guardian spiders that tickle you feel With gossamer thread weave our goddess's seal The Spider Queen's children, and so too your kin Are here to remind you that you shall not sin They show you the scourge, the snake-headed whip They bite and they tear until she hears your prayer. There is no such blessing to the damned up above. Those who've forsaken the Spider Queen's love. In their way lies weakness, an unceasing waste. And if you would join them, then so be debased. And when Hellfire Orb looks down on your shame, your soul is burned bare. She knows you're to blame. You'll live ever running. You've no place to hide. And huddled in fear, for there is no disguise. The sun, it will burn you. The cold snow will freeze. The hopelessness tumbles you down to your knees. And when you are broken, to her you will pray. But she will not hear you. You've thrown her away. And you'll find no companions to stand in our way when we hunt you and fight you and torment for play. You've chosen the weaklings of the world up above who speak empty words and know not Loth's love. No Loth will not save you from human deceit, nor from bearded dwarves, nor elvish conceit. The Spider Queen shows us the one single way. There is only the night. There is never the day. For strength does not stretch through branch or through leaf. It bleeds from the roots that secure us beneath, deep in our hearts, wrapped tight in Loth's web. With venom we sting, her glory we sing. So whisper your love of your matron, your mother, who teaches the way to your sisters and brother. Brother, I say, there can only be one, for if there were two, there couldn't be you. Then that silken swaddle, that tickling wreath, would instead be your death by the Spider Queen's teeth. A 
that low. That's good. That's good, man. I got goosebumps. I'll be honest with you. I definitely got goosebumps at a point during that. Um, I had a, you saw my face might have been a little odd at a couple points in there because I was like, well, that it's not historically accurate to the story. Not that uh, you know it needed to be. It was an epic like motion comic. I would watch a full blown motion comic like that of the Tales of Drizzt, one hundred percent. For those of you who don't want to read the books and don't want to listen to the audiobooks, they did release a comic series, or I think it might be available in like an omnibus or a graphic novel compendium of at least the early years. And there was actually a separate comic on Cutter, the sword that we mentioned, Casatea. There was a separate. Um, separate comic just called cutter that was about wielding that sword which was interesting that's a whole nother story but um yeah i, I obviously some of the chrono chronology of those events didn't happen exactly like they did in the books but it's okay we saw some epic things we saw Cadibri being introduced to drizzt though there was a massive age difference there when that happened she was a little girl um and we saw uh we saw Brunner forging Aegis Fang, which was pretty awesome. Wolfgar's legendary battle. You know, they call it a Warhammer. It's really more of a mall, but anyway. Uh awesome. I'm excited. I don't know what this all means, but one of the things that people are thinking, and I tend to agree with, is this article from comicbook.com about how we knew there's gonna be a DD &D movie. So I did a video on that. I don't know if that's been debunked, so take the rumors from that with a grain of salt, but the casting is still there. And I think that that would sound great, so I hope it is true. Um, but the upcoming Drizzt uh, live action television series might be focused on Drizzt. So we again, it's talking about how there's a bunch going on, Magic the Gathering cards, Funko Pops, the Halloween costumes that came out last year, the replica scimitars I've got on the wall, the action figure I've got right here. Um, the press release then noted a live action TV show is in development with E1 Entertainment, and although not focused on Drizzt, a movie set in the Forgotten Realm starring Chris Pine, Hugh Grant, uh, I guess it's Reggie Jean, Reg Reg Jean, I don't know how you pronounce his name, Paige, Michelle Rodriguez, Sophia Lillis, blah, blah, blah. Everybody we just talked about yesterday in the, D in the movie, um, video, which I'm very excited. The cast sounds great. Um, when comicbook.com reached out for clarification, Wizards of the F Coast confirmed the upcoming D&D movie was not focused on Drizzt, but there is a TV show in development that might be. We'll talk about a, what kind of line is that? Definitely not the movie, but the TV show might be. Is it though? I feel like you know, but maybe you just don't want to say. Television show could be uh, the same D and D project that John Rick, uh, John Wick director Derek Colstead is working on. Earlier this year, Colstead hinted that his upcoming D and D TV show would be set in the Underdark, a massive series of caverns and spread over entire continents. Most Drow, also known as Dark Elves, live in the Underdark, and that's where obviously where Drizzt is from. I don't want a Drizzt origin story personally. I get that you need it. I get it. I do. I think I've just been spoiled, and a lot of us have kind of been spoiled that like more of the superhero related stuff that we've gotten lately we've gotten away from origin stories and i mean it's not like we fully haven't but a lot of origin stories we're talking like five to ten years ago was the last time we had like a real origin story movie so i've loved that the movies are we're just diving in and maybe it's just because i'm so steeped in in driz stuff that i don't need to see the origin story but that's how you hook people right so you got to have that good origin story you got to deal with the the inner workings of the society in Menzo Baronzone, which is not a great society. So that's also potentially like a questionable option. If you're going to go with Menzo Baronzone, you need to deal with uh, all sorts of, you know, uh, religious zealotism and slavery and, you know, all this other kinds of things, murder and backstabbing and, you know, sacrificing of your children to a spider queen god. It's an interesting choice for a show. It's going to have to be mature for sure, definitely, and it, it'll be good. And then I would love to see, you know, I mean, the travels that Driz does when he leaves Menzo Barons on are interesting. And then obviously you want to get it to Icewood Dale because that's that's where it all started, even though the stories, like for those of you who don't know, the novels originally started in Icewind Dale 
the first trilogy happened, the Crystal Shard trilogy, which you should read. That's the one you should definitely read. But then after those three books came out, the next three books were the prequel that happened before that shows how Drizzt managed to leave uh, and get into Icewind Dale. So like the, the order was different when they were released chronologically, but you want to start probably with the Homeland trilogy or the Dark Elf trilogy is the first one that leads to um, Crystal Shard. Anyway, uh, let's see if we scroll down here. As a heroic ranger, uh, the character first appeared as a side character in the Crystal Shard, uh, written by Salvatore, but quickly became the focus of his long-running series. In the books and other media, Driz is an outcast of sorts from Drow Society, which traditionally worships the evil Spider Queen God and all the other people along. To kick off celebration, they released a four-minute animated video showing Driz's origin story. So that's the other thing. Like, the origin story happened, like, in that video. We saw it, for the most part. Again, creative liberties taken to make it an interesting video, but that was basically the origin story. There's a lot more, right? We didn't get anything with, um, you know, any of the stuff with Blinged in Stone or, you know, the Mind Flayers and the Hook Horrors and all the other crazy stuff, but um, still cool. So, I don't know. What do you think? Um, I realize this is a, almost a half an hour long video I had not intended to be, but there's a lot of stuff. So, are you a Drow, a Drizzt fan? Are you into this? Are you down? Are you all about this? Are you not at all? And, like, this is your first time learning about this? Or you've learned learned about who Drizzt is recently? Or did it make you interested in it? Are you curious to now go check this stuff out? I mean, at the very least, you know, right? The action figure collectible here is pretty solid, as are the scimitars. Um, don't know about a $1,500 Drizzt statue. I tell you what. If someone wants to buy me that Drizzt statue, I will put it right here. Right here in all of the videos. And I will wear the cloak in at least 20 videos. But <laughs> either way, I, I mean, I'm curious. I'd like to see it personally. I got to imagine at like conventions, at like the WizKids booth, it'll obviously be a nice centerpiece along with like the Pathfinder full-size goblin. Like those are nice like set pieces for a booth or again like a game store. But I don't know. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.